Before we get into the charts, analyzing Ginkgo Bioworks holding, I would like to go over this article by The Motley Fool, and it's titled, Three Reasons Why Kathy Wood is Buying Ginkgo Bioworks Stock Hand Over Fist. That really intrigued me. So Ginkgo's business model is to help his clients with tricky task of designing, culturing, and harvesting the valuable outputs of bioengineered microorganisms like yeast at industrial scale. Management terms for that model is biofoundry. Much like with semiconductor foundries, the biofoundry makes money by doing the engineering and manufacturing tasks far more efficiently than what customers could do on their own. In the first quarter of 2023 alone, it onboarded 13 new programs from clients and its cell engineering operations generated $34 million. In revenue, that was 90 that was 59% more revenue than a year prior. But before the end of the year, management is angling to onboard a total of 100 programs. Here's the second reason. Right now, the company's roster of collaborators is looking star-studded. you got the heavyweights in the pharma industry as Merck, uh, Moderna, Eli Lilly, among others. If the collaborations turn out just as planned, it will likely lead to further agreements with the same parties. All right, more business, good business, equates to more business, good business. More importantly, the biotech might be able to capture some of the revenue that its collaborators generated by teaming up as a result of royalty sharing agreements. And here's the third reason. Thanks to the bear market, Ginkgo shares are down 53% in the last 12 months. Sports a price to sales ratio 4.3, making it discounted in comparison to other bio companies in the industries that average collectively 5.3. And what is the one to pass up a bargain by, provided her long term investment thesis still holds up? Now, how much does Kathy Wood own of the company? Well, she owns about 170 million. She started going hard at the beginning of 2022 uh, it only represents 2.24 percent of her portfolio um, let's see she is the 17th largest holder uh, and she holds roughly 10 percent of all outstanding shares now if this article didn't do justice in telling you what ginkgo bioworks stock does i found the video on CNB cnbc from a year ago that does a great job explaining the company's business model. The company itself, um, because of the way this has been described, Ginkgo seeks to make programming the DNA of cells as easy as programming computers. I mean, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. It also sounds very hard. What does it entail? Okay, so the core idea is inside of every cell, right, every plant, animal, microbe, is digital code in the form of DNA, mm -hmm. right? It's ATCs and Gs, not zeros and ones like in a computer, but you can read that code, DNA sequencing, like genomics and you can write it with DNA printing. And so what we do at Ginkgo is we have a big 200,000 square foot lab in Boston where we read and write genetic code to program cells for customers, and then we make money kind of like Apple would in the App Store. If we program a cell for you, we get a royalty on the sales of the products that come from that cell. That's the business model. Yeah, and of course that was exactly my next question, which is this idea of cell programming. I mean, with many biotechs, I think historically yeah. it's been you create a product or a suite of products and then you patent them, you sell them. You're taking a much more horizontal approach, almost like the way we see AWS or one of the big cloud players targeting a variety of industries. Yeah, 100%. So, so the, the model is actually, yeah, stolen from tech. I mean, I think this is why we're the, you know, with $1.6 billion, the largest biotech IPO in history, is because we're, we're not bringing a drug out to market. What we're bringing out is a platform, right? It is like an operating system or, or an AWS or an app store. And the idea is if we're successful, all of those apps should ultimately run on Ginkgo's platform. That, that's really what we're hoping to achieve. Okay, so that business, the cell programming business, is basically your so-called foundry business. You also have another business that's focused on biosecurity that's much more tied to COVID, for example, testing in schools, yes. being one of those key pieces. That's been growing particularly fast. Yeah. Um, so how are you looking at the growth of those two businesses, uh, not only yeah. through the rest of this year, but beyond. I mean, how sustainable is that biosecurity piece of the business? Yeah, I know it's a good problem to have to have two fast-growing businesses. Yes. So, so yeah, we've, we've signed about uh, four, more than $400 million of contracts with states around the country in the last few months around K-12 testing. And the way we look at this is if we're going to make it as easy to program cells as it is to program computers, just like Google would invest in cybersecurity, we should be investing in biosecurity. 
And what COVID has shown us is we're not really prepared for this sort of thing. And so, so part of that business is the testing. The, the other work we've done, we just announced a partnership with Aldevron, one of the big mRNA vaccine manufacturers, where we gave them a program cell that improved the production of one of the ingredients for mRNA vaccines tenfold. And so, you know, mm. we'll get royalties on that just like we normally do, but it also speeds the scale and, and productivity of mRNA vaccines for biosecurity. Okay. So the pandemic, at least right now, and where that part of the business is concerned, uh, continues to be a growth driver. In terms of looking across the broader platform and the different industries you work with, where do you see the other greatest growth opportunities? Yeah, so I think you'll see us actually do more in therapeutics. We announced a deal with Biogen earlier this year in the area of gene therapy. But if you look at the kind of project Ginkgo does, you know, we, we've worked with a company called Kronos up in Canada, uh, Zaltria, as JV, that does uh, cannabis production. So we engineer a cell to produce cannabinoids so you don't have to grow the fields. We work in animal-free meat with a company called Motif Foodworks. We work in antibiotics with Roche. Like, the range of, of places you can apply this is really broad. And so the thing I'm most excited coming up, startups, small companies. You should be able to launch a new company on Ginkgo's platform without building a lab. You can just have an idea for a cell program, we'll huh. do the biotech, and you can commercialize. And that's exactly like what the folks at Motif did. They're, they're food scientists, they're, they're expert food people, right? They're making like impossible burgers. They didn't have to have any biotech people, Ginkgo handled all that. It's like outsourcing to the cloud if you were starting a website. Same idea. So startups is really where I want to grow. Uh, hey, Jason, it's uh, David back here at Post 9. Um, you know, I read through the risk factors, and we should point out risk factors in, a, in an S1 are just that. Many of them don't actually happen, but you've got to list them. Yep. Nonetheless, it's not often you see one that sort of talks about the potential for malevolent purposes from third parties who, uh, you know, who gain um, uh, access to some of your uh, engineered cell materials. How big a concern is that? Because it kind of sounds pretty scary. Yeah, so I think there's two halves to this. So one is sort of like the software industry would have needed to deal with like piracy because it's very easy to copy software. I think as you see more cell programs out in the world, you're going to need sort of legal structures to make sure people can't steal them and that sort of thing and, and pirate it. That's one half of it. And then the other is, is biosecurity. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the reality is we, we are entering the age of biotechnology. I mean, you know, Ginkgo being the biggest life science IPO, it's a moment, right? It's a moment for synthetic biology. It's a moment for programming cells. That's going to come into our lives. And if we're going to do that safely and responsibly, we do need to invest in biosecurity. And, and this is why COVID-19, it, it's, it's nice. It's, it's kind of like cybersecurity happening before the Internet, right? Instead of us having to catch up after the fact. Right. All of what we're building up now in the U.S. and worldwide, it will help us with those problems. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious, speaking of biosecurity, I mean, there are those who believe that uh, that COVID actually did come out of a, a lab in Wuhan uh, accidentally, perhaps, yeah. or most likely. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I think it could have it could have been an accident. It could have not. I don't think it was engineered or anything like that. I think that's definitely not the case. Um, in terms of the foundry business, break even in 2024, 2025, how do you get there? So basically increasing the number of programs we're doing. So we actually okay. just updated, you know, we had we ended last year with about 50 cell programs for customers. We were saying we we're going to hit 23 this year. We just updated that to 30. Next year we want to do more than 60. And then by 2024 we want to be adding 500. And so it's really about adding new programs onto the platform. It drives our cost down because the facilities in Boston, it's robotics and automation. It's like... Intel or Ford, the more of this work we do, it gets cheaper. This is why people are moving to us, right? And, and so that, that's the big way that we, we hit those numbers is we keep just scaling the business and riding that kind of cost curve down. Yeah, and I guess just to dig into that business model a little bit more, you mentioned the fees. Yeah. I mean, so, so it's almost like you have, for example, startups that I know you're excited to get on board the platform. Yeah. Is it, 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 it almost becomes biotech or I guess biotech innovation as a service? Is That's that right. the way to think about it? Exactly, yeah. So for like a one to three, like let's take this project for Al Debron. That was about a one year project to program that cell. If we were doing that work with a customer, we'd often get paid fees, right? So just, you know, like Amazon would get paid for usage compute. And then at the end, we give it to them and that's when the app store revenue kicks in. So now we get a royalty from Aldebaran in the future. Well, that just pays, you know, 100% margin. That's a great business. And so those are the two halves of it. It helps offset and make, make the company uh, more solvent in the near term to bring in the cash on R&D. But really, what we're, where the real value is, is all the downstream value share of the app store. And just to wrap up. Hope that video did some justice on further explaining Ginkgo Bioworks business model. Let's go to the monthly chart and um, well, you can say the price has had a V-shape recovery and currently respecting the 
up trend line on the monthly chart. Love seeing these type of patterns where you have uh, three candles, uh, in this case three wicks on the downside of the candles, uh, price opened to go lower to only go higher, right? That signal the bottom. All right, so let's scroll down to the weekly chart and another great sign for the bulls. We got the crossover of the 13 and 26 simple weekly moving average. Let's put that in pink. So the question becomes although price sold off. Then look at this here. Another pattern similar to the to the bottom pattern we saw in the monthly chart. Three candles, third candle price open to go up just to go down. Alright. So my eyes gravitate to this resistance support band at two dollars support 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 or rather resistance 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 support right all right so let's go down to the daily chart and earnings is coming up this week um, so not quite sure why we had a gap down some type of news of course now the good part for the bulls again uh, we have a v-shaped recovery We've seen the uh, 13 and the 26 uh, bullish crossover on the weekly chart. We see price is definitively above the 200 day moving average. Um, we see price bounced off of the 50 day moving average. We have a golden cross um, occurring where the 50 crosses over on the upside. On the 200, uh, it's just bullish all around. Now to give us some clues for next week's earnings price was muted last time price was muted again price sold off let's, let's check one more time one more earnings price sold off so the last four earnings we had two sell-offs and uh, two muted price actions after earnings so wait for earnings don't buy now if you are a Kathy Wood fan and if you try to mimic her portfolio um, I like this level uh, at the say the 175 And that puts price, let's put that in green. That would signify if price sells off on earnings. Uh, this is the monthly uptrend line that price is respecting. This is also where the 200 day moving average lines up. Um, if we get another sell off, based on the technicals, the chart suggests to go long. Price action wise, uh, I don't like all this trading to the left. Um, as there are no imbalances between buyers and sellers. Um, but let's see what happens. Um, this is a young company uh, with a lot of potential in the um, healthcare industry. Um, if Kathy Wood thinks it's good and we are going to get helicopter money again, um, this could be a stock that can go higher. Uh, if I scroll back up to, let's do the weekly chart. How high can price get to? Um, look for a target at 320 as a short term um, target. And that just is signified by uh, these wicks here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Please like the video.